Good morning, everyone. So for this week's announcement, since there were a couple of different things to talk about that we haven't done yet, I figured a video would probably be the best way to do that. So this is what we're looking at now is the pretzel assignment for this week, which is due on Sunday by 11.59 p.m. You also have an inquisitive due on Friday by 11.59 p.m. So for the debate, we are talking about the progressives this week and there are so many different things to talk about and so many different ways to talk about them that I figured a debate would be a great way to do this. Now for this debate you're actually going to post in both sides of the argument. So that means you'll need at least one post in each side and then you'll need a total of two responses to classmates. So you can react to someone in each side, so one person in each side, or you can react to two people in one side uh, it's entirely up to you, but you'll need a total of two posts, one on each side of the debate, and a total of two responses. So you can see that um, this is all about progressives expanding and limiting democracy in the early 20th century. So uh, let's see, discuss the ways in which progressivism expanded democracy during the early 20th century. Discuss the ways in which progressivism limited democracy during the early 20th century. So we've got hashtags here. Um, got plenty, plenty of documents. You definitely want to cite your sources here, like we always want to do in history. Again, this is informal, so you can have a parentheses, you know, VOF 121 or something uh, for your citation, or you can even do hashtags for your citations. You can just do hashtag VOF 120. Um, but you need to, you know, if you use a source from class, which you really, really should, you need to mention it somewhere in the post. This does not have a character limit either, so you won't get uh, constrained by that. So that is the pretzel assignment, again, due Sunday by 11.59 p.m. So just wanted to go over that with you. So you'll need to post once in each side, at least. You can post more than once in each side if you want, but minimum of once in each side, and then reacting, or re which means responding, to two classmates' posts total. And definitely remember to include where your sources came from, what your sources are. All right, so that's that. Looking ahead to week six, you can see here's the week six folder. Here's the paper assignment. So it's coming up. Uh, it's due actually on 11.59 p.m. on Valentine's Day, February 14th. So you've got almost two weeks left still. I mentioned this at the very beginning of last week, So and it's been on the schedule since day one. Um, so definitely should not be a surprise. I certainly hope it's not. As you can see here, I've got a prompt. I've got the guidelines for what the paper should look like, what your sources are going to be, and I've got grading criteria in order of most important to least important, or most points versus least points, and then I've got formatting criteria too, and then the due date as well. And then attached is this writings tips sheet. So I know that I've mentioned this several times. Um, let's see many, many, many times, because it is so important and it will give you so much information. Um, this is cutting down an excessive use of to be, like is, was, were. People in history uh, classes for the first time tend to use was and were a ton. It's uh, excessive use of to be, and it's also passive voice, you can see down here as well. So these are tips on how to eliminate those things, which are great for the editing process. Lots of other tips in here as well. Rules for writing a formal paper. Um, just, you, you need to read this. Um, let's see. Topic, tips on topic sentences, tips on how to start your paper, how to get it going, you know, ways to begin, uh, how to start, you know. And then guidelines for where your thesis statement goes on your paper, which is your argument. Your argument is your answer to the paper's question. And then you will back it up throughout the entire paper with evidence. I should be able to read your first paragraph or your introduction and know what your entire paper is about. And we have a three to five page paper. So here's the guideline for that. And then here is the um, general structure guidelines that can help you as you write. Notation. Um, we are using MLA, a parenthetical citation. And here's how you would cite the books. This is how you would do it in works cited. This is how you would do it in the paper itself. You need both parenthetical citations and a works cited page. There's how you do Voices of Freedom, article uh, in a scholarly journal, primary document on Blackboard, so that's something that's linked on Blackboard. 
uh, video from Blackboard, and class lectures. So that's your notation guidelines. So the EG is how to do it in the works cited, and the S is shortened. You will not include the S in your citation, but that's how you do the parenthetical. So again, strongly recommend you take a look at this. It was written by my mentor, Dr. Kathy Mellon Sharon. She's an excellent, very smart woman, uh, and you should definitely take advantage of this excellent resource. So, the prompt. Never in the history of the world was society in so terrific flux, which is continuous change, as it is right now. That's what Jack London wrote in The Iron Heel, which was a 1908 dystopian novel. So your question is, how have the United States changed in the 50 years since the end of the Civil War? So you're going to use material from this week, and um, you probably, you might use some material from next week, but not very much because the U.S. doesn't enter World War I until 1917, and it would be 1965 to 1915 is the 50 years since the Civil War. So you'll definitely want to use the Progressive Era from this week, week five, and the things that came before it to talk about how the U.S. has changed. You can look at politically, socially, culturally, in terms of race and gender. You can talk about um, the relationship with the government. You can talk about all kinds of different ways that the United States has changed. Technology, um, you know, where people live, what they do, how work has become to be defined, um, who's working where, what people are doing, all these things that changed tons and tons and tons that we've already seen from 1865 to 1905. is what you want to look at. So it's going to be a three to five page paper. That means a minimum of three full pages. Two pages and six lines is not a three page paper. It is a two and a little bit page paper. So you've got here a uh, clear argument that you'll need, convincing evidence, logical structure, and concise polished prose. Again, that writing tips handout is the best for this. A clear argument. Remember, your argument is how you answer the question. So how would the United States change in the 50 years since the end of the Civil War? However you plan to answer that, that's your argument then you will spend the paper backing up the different pieces of your argument. You know, if you say it's changed politically, culturally, and in terms of work, maybe that's your, you know, you're picking three points, then you're going to spend different sections of the paper supporting each of those points with evidence. That's just a very loose example. Again, the writing tips sheet is your friend. Use the primary sources as your evidence for the first six weeks of the class, which again, you may not use week six as much. Secondary sources like Give Me Liberty and Lecture should also be included, but will play a smaller role in your essay. Your main evidence should be primary sources from Voices of Freedom and Blackboard. Now, you are allowed to use outside sources, but only for primary documents. So if there is a topic that you want, like let's say you really enjoyed the Industrial work Workers of the World stuff, which I think is either this week or not. I think, yes, yeah, this week it's Progressive Art. Um, and you really want to explore how labor changed. You may need more than the Industrial Workers of the World document, since most of your evidence is supposed to be primary. You can definitely find different databases. You can um, do. You can find primary sources through our library website. You can usually find uh, great databases by Googling. Make sure it's legit. If you're not sure, send me an email. Uh, the Library of Congress has great databases. All these things are available to you. Again, you can use outside sources, but only for primary documents. No scholarly articles, no other secondary sources like other textbooks. Primary sources are the main element of your evidence, so that is what you are allowed to gather outside sources uh, for. Okay, so be sure to have a clear argument that you defend with relevant evidence, organize your paper with a logical structure, and use clear topic sentences and transitions to help your reader understand the logic of your organization. The Writing Tips handout has some information on that as well. Edit thoroughly to avoid errors and improve readability. Again, writing tips sheet. And give your paper a title that reflects your argument. Don't call it paper one. Grading criteria. The argument is going to be the most important piece. The evidence, evidence will come next and be the next most important piece. Because remember, historians like to make arguments about the past and construct ideas and narratives about the past and use evidence to support those narratives and arguments. So therefore, argument is number one, evidence is number two. Organization, also very important. Don't jump around in time. Don't start in 1892, and then your next paragraph is 1875. You're going backwards in time. We're not time travelers. We are not the doctor. So stick with a linear time in your organization. And also clear topic sentences and transitions. 
Concision. Is your paper efficient? Avoiding pa passive voice and bloated prose. You heard me mention passive voice when we looked at that writing tip sheet. Again, it's attached here. Definitely take advantage of that. Formatting. It needs to be 12 point times New Roman font double space. One inch margins. Three to full. Three to four. Oh, I can't read. Three to five full double space pages. MLA. Again, see the writing tip sheet for that. And there's the deadline. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If it does not, or as you're writing, if you want me to take a look at it, let me know. Let's see the papers do on Valentine's Day. I would say I will take a look at any draft or outline. It doesn't have to be a full draft. If you can get it to me by noon on February 10th, it's four days before it's due. So again, it can be an outline. But because I have other classes doing papers, I can't do it right up to the last minute. And you shouldn't do it right up to the last minute either. So by noon on February 10th, if you can get me a draft or an outline, I will look at it and get you feedback by noon on the 12th. Depends on how my, it might be a couple hours and I might get it back on the afternoon of the 10th. But if all 30 of you send me outlines, it's going to take me a couple days to get to everybody. But by the 12th at noon, within 48 hours of when you give it to me, I'll get it back to you. So you still have a couple days to finish it up. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, feel free to reach out. If it does, but you want to follow up with more stuff, feel free to reach out. So remember, we've got office hours that are virtual. You can pop in and share your screen with me if you want to show me what your outline looks like and ask me questions. That's fine. Um, if you are writing about something and you're, and you're not sure where to look for extra primary sources or you've got a couple ideas, um, but you want my feedback, we can definitely meet up to do that too. Remember also Voices of Freedom means any Voices of Freedom document too. So even the ones we have not been assigned, any document in there that answers your question, it's got to be relevant evidence, is absolutely okay to use. So I hope this makes sense. So again, remember, we've got the pretzel this Sunday by 11.59 p.m. It's the debate. Post once in each side at least, and then respond to at least two classmates. And then paper... Sunday, February 14th, get a draft or an outline to me by noon on February 10th, and you will get feedback. Um, also remember, you know, office hours and email are available for you to use if you want uh, any, if you have any questions or anything that you don't think you need to send a draft for, but um, you just want to clear up something or as you're working and it's after the 10th and you have a question, you can send me an email. It doesn't mean no questions after the 10th, it just means I will not pledge to look at drafts and outlines after February 10th, but I will definitely answer general questions if you email me. All right. I hope this makes sense. I hope this is clear. If it's not, again, please get in touch with me, and I hope everyone has a great week.